So the thing about Me Too is I feel this is also, there's some nuance, room for nuance here too. I have mixed feelings about Kevin Spacey, who obviously behaved badly uh, on the set of House of Cards and on other sets and was chasing the boys around or whatever he was doing. But since everybody knew it was going on and nobody stopped him, shouldn't everybody quit? Why is it just him? him? I mean, the rules change. If the rules change, I think the guy has a chance to uh, get, should get a chance to adapt to the new rules. I mean, even some of these guys who behaved uh, un in really ugly ways toward women, if they didn't actually break the law, some of them were playing by the, this is what's going on in this place. You know, why isn't everybody to blame? Why does that one guy get targeted? So I really do have feel mixed feelings about it. Now, unless Moonves we were talking about, if, if those charges of the violent assaults are true, then obviously that is a terrible, terrible thing. And now there's a new one, the guy from 60 Minutes, uh, Jeff Fager, the longtime executive producer of 60 Minutes. He was fired after Jerrica Duncan. I like this because she reported on it. Jerrica Duncan, a reporter, uh, was said, you know, there were accusations against him in The New Yorker. And she said she was going to report on it. And he wrote to her, if you repeat these false accusations without any of your own reporting to back them up, you will be held responsible for harming me. Be careful. There are people who lost their jobs trying to harm me. And if you pass on these damaging claims without your own reporting to back them up, that will become a serious problem. So he's saying the claims are untrue, but he threatened her. And that's what he was fired for. He threatened her basically with losing her job. And he, that's why he lost his job. Very disturbing video. Very disturbing video of Harvey Weinstein and a business lady named Melissa Thompson. And I'm, I'm going to sh show like just a few minutes of this while she's also talking to, I think it's a, a Sky News reporter. Uh, so she is walking the Sky News reporter through this video. She was selling a, uh, a demo for her tech startup company, a new video and analytics service. And as part of this, she was recording the sales pitch, right? And Harvey Weinstein came in and dismissed into her office and dismissed all the people and locked the door. And so she's in there alone with Harvey Weinstein. And he's offering basically to buy her service. But then he starts to flirt, you know, flirt with her. And he says, can I flirt with you? And she says, well, you can flirt with me a little. She's a very attractive lady. Let's just play a little bit more of this. And this is both the video and her explaining it. Okay. And then I'm going to use your service Good. on Marilyn Royal. Good. And then, you know, you can sign me up, tell yeah. your boss. And so he's going from almost pulling a trigger on using this platform to then he would put his hand up under the table, up my dress. I was trying to save face a bit. At first, I was trying to kind of manage the situation. There was a combination of confidence and, and naivety um, that led me to, you know, this dynamic that we see now. Wow. Dave is so hot, right? <laughs> What's that? Dave is so hot. It is hot. <laughs> You're hot. Uh, you need a little bit hot. It's okay. Can I take some A little bit. Okay. Uh, uh, it's a little hot. It's a little hot. It's a little hot. Okay, so she's kind of flirting with him. She slaps him on the shoulder. She says, Data's so hot. He says, if you couldn't hear it, he's kind of muttering. He says, you're so hot. And he puts his hand under her dress. And she says, that's a little high. That's a little high. Now, there's all kinds of nuance here, right? You can say, oh, well, she said he could flirt a little. She didn't say, take your hand off me. She said, that's a little too high. Later, he enticed her to his hotel room and raped her, she says. She says he, he actually raped her. Now, I got to tell you, I, I watched this thing. I have no feeling in favor of Harvey Weinstein here. I, I, I understand there's nuance. He may not be guilty of anything in court for what is on that video, right? He may not be guilty on anything uh, for anything that's on that video. She herself says she let him get away with things. She kind of fell into, he, he, he's playing her. He's good at what he does. He's, you know, these, these rapist guys are always good at what they do. He's playing her. He knows how far he can go. He backs off a little. He comes back on again. I got no respect for him. I've got no feeling for him. If he was backed over by a truck, I wouldn't blink, okay? That's, that's the way I feel about this. But the reason I feel that way is because I'm not a feminist. That's the reason I feel that way. If you're a feminist, if you believe that men and women are equal, if you believe that they are on complete equal footing, then she's responsible. She is responsible wholly for herself. She is responsible for saying, take your hand out from under my dress. I do not want you doing that. I don't care whether you buy my product or not. If you're a feminist, if you're not a feminist, if you're me, like the last non-feminist on earth, right, 
then you believe that he has some responsibility for her because he's a man and she's a woman, that we have to take care of women a little bit. We have to watch out for them a little bit. The world has changed. When I say I'm not a feminist, it's not like I don't understand the world has changed. It's that I don't feel women were oppressed. I feel that they had a certain role, that some of that role changed because of technology and the world changed and some of their economic power disappeared with the industrial revolution when uh, a lot of industries moved out of the home. They're women's lives change. Now they've changed and moved into the business world. They can make any choice they want as far as I'm concerned, but they don't stop being women and men don't stop being men. And if men do not behave like gentlemen, women are going to suffer. So, you know, there's a piece by a New York Times writer, Courtney Sender, and she talks about uh, having a younger man come over. She meets him on Tinder. Good thinking, Courtney. She meets him on Tinder and he comes over and everything he does, he asks for permission. Can we go to the bedroom? Uh, can I can I take take off your sweater? Can I take off your tank top? You know, he asks every step of the way. He asks. Finally, he sleeps with her, gets in an Uber, disappears, never calls her again. Right? And she says, "Well, gee, maybe consent should go beyond just sex. Maybe afterwards you should have some responsibility for the person that you're in." And it's like I'm thinking, wait, wait. I have to, you have to give me your consent after I'm gone, after it's over? No, that's not the point. You cannot twist the word consent to mean that. But maybe, maybe the whole system is broken. You know, maybe this feminist system isn't working. Maybe you cannot twist human relations to that degree and get away with it. And so, you know, if we discuss these things instead of bursting into tears, if we discuss these things instead of condemning people, instead of throwing people off, I would have liked to hear the conversation with Norm MacDonald uh, if Jimmy had said, said if Fallon had said to him, you know, those were some stupid things to say, you know, let's hear your excuse. You know, that that might have been an interesting conversation. Yeah, crying doesn't, you know, there's no crying in freedom. There's no, you know, it's that old movie that with Tom Hanks, there's no crying in baseball. Well, there's no crying in freedom. You've got to be tough to be free. And it's not enough to sit there and say, oh, he said something that's hateful, it's hateful. Find out, talk to him. You know, 